Hey, if you love what you see here on this channel and you want to help us to grow, do me a favor. Please like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's really going to help us to grow and it's going to help you to get more great content. All right, enjoy this video. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another lesson. Welcome back to GMTC. We're going to be covering the song entitled Like to Do in the Morning. This is a gospel classic. I remember learning this song as a kid. And because of the chords, because of the voicings, I found myself trying to pick out these chords and rewinding. And this is when we had tapes and CDs. And my mom, I was driving her crazy. All she heard was, Rrr! because that's the sound it made because I had to rewind so much just to try to pick out these chords and voicings and I still wasn't right. So I'm glad to be able to share this song with you because it brings back so many memories. We actually covered this song in the past when the Gospel Music Training Center first started, but if you look at the quality and, you know, when we first started and just the whole approach, my whole approach to teaching has changed. So I'm going to hopefully help you to understand certain things, how they work. And this is one of those songs, one of those lessons where you can take it and transpose it to so many different keys because it's so simple. It's so repetitive. There's not a whole lot of things going on, but just nuances that are built upon the same chord progression, the one to the six, to the two, to the five, to the one. So there's not a lot of chord, different chord progressions going on, but what I want to do is show you how you could take a simple chord progression, understand the foundation of the chords that happen, and then build upon that. So this is part one. We're going to get into just playing without a bass player, left hand bass, right hand chords. And this is definitely one of those songs that if you want to really capture the essence of it, you got to have a bass player. But I'm going to do my best to keep the essence of the song and deliver it in a way where you can still make it sound good because... There's a lot of things that the keyboard player was playing where the left hand was playing some chords and then the right hand was playing some different movements and stuff. But I'm going to show you some different variations, some different approaches that you can try to get the same sound. All right, so we're going to have some fun. We're going to be in the key of F major. Let's check out the number system and scale. So F is the one. G is the two. A is the three. B flat is the four. C is the five. D is the six. E is the seven. And then we're back at the one, F. So that's the number system in scale. That's what we're gonna use to identify the chord progression. So if I say, and this is for those of you who are new to the gospel music training center. So if I say, I'm going to go to the one, I'm going, that means in my left hand, I'm going to play F. If I say, I'm going to go to the six, that means in the left hand, I'm going to play D. So it's pretty much the roadmap, the scale and the number system is used to identify the chord progressions. And the chord progressions are derived from the bass note that we're going to be playing in our left hand. So I just wanted to let you know that right off the bat. So the first thing that we're going to do is start off with the intro and it sounds like this. Now the first part of this intro seems like a lot, but we're gonna break this all the way down. So what I did was I started off with this. And you can think about what I just did as a two, five, one chord progression. Going from the two to the five. And look at it like this. Going from this chord to this chord. So we're in the key of F, right? The two is G, and we're playing like a broken up, crazy way of playing <laughs> like a, a G minor nine chord voicing. And then we're gonna go to this C7 with a flat nine. So that movement, if you look at this chord, there's no bass, it's just like, think mentally, two to the five. But that's what's dope about it that I like is that you, it's kind of like, 
you can't figure out what's going on, but I kind of put some some a method to the madness. So I'm looking at the chord like this. Okay, this is a like a two chord, like a G minor nine. So the first part of the the intro is gonna start with the top part of the chord. This right here as a drop two voicing. So you come up here and you start with this. So we got D, F, and A, right? So instead of playing D, F, and A, we play the F in our left hand and then the D and A in our right. And that's how we got that, okay? And then we're gonna come down here and play this. So if you look at this, this is still a part of the chord. Like, it's the same chord. It's just the notes are rearranged. So we, we start with F in the left hand and then D and A in the right. And then we do this. So now we have D and F in the left hand and then A, B flat, and F in the right. But if we really look at this chord, this chord is the same as, if we, if we take away this, some of the doubled up notes, so if we take away this F, right? And then let's, this is what we're left with. Now let's move this B flat down, down here. Look what we got. It's the same chord that I was trying to tell you. So it's just broken up ways to play in that same chord. And then we're gonna come here and now we have B flat D in the left hand and then F and D in the right. So we're gonna go from here to here to here, and then we're gonna get here. Same chord, just different voicings. Instead of the F being up here, now the F is down here, and you can use G as a grace note. So now we got F in the left hand, and then B flat, D, and A in the right. So once again, whoops, sorry. And you don't necessarily have to use the G as a grace note, so. And you can think about that as like going on a two. You hear it? Dun, dun. And, it, and usually when you do a two to the five, where is it gonna take you? To the one. So that's how I kind of made sense out of what was being played instead of looking at it as a bunch of crazy, you know, chord voicings, but it's taken from a concept. So let's practice that. Let's slow it down a little bit though. Here we go. One, two, here we go. And notice how I'm playing with two hands like this. But when we get into the song, it's gonna be left hand bass. One, I do it slower too. One, two, this is the last time. Three, and. All right. So after that, we're gonna get into the song. And this is the start of the world famous one, six, two, five, one chord progression, which means we're gonna go from the one to the six, to the two, to the five. But we're not starting with the groove. We're gonna get into the song, so it's gonna be like this. That's the one, and then to the six. And then to the two. Then to the five. And then we do the same chord progression again, but higher. And then break on the five. Okay, so that's the one, six, two, five, one. So let's start off with the first chord on the one. So what we have is starting off is We're starting with an F major chord, A and F, with the middle note taken out. So this is an F major chord, 
we got the C taken out. So we got A and F, and then that takes us to a G major chord, G, C, and E. But we have the middle note taken out of that too as well. So we got A, C, and F to G, C, and E. But with the middle notes taken out. So with A and F, and then we're gonna come here. And we're gonna play E and C. But I mean, this you don't have to do this with this little row. So I have E and C, and basically I'm sliding up with my thumb. Like that. It's that West Coast sound. And you can add the A in there if you want to. So if you look at it this way, it's like an A minor chord, E, A, and C, and then I'm sliding up to the E from D. Okay? That's the first part.